Today we're going to be working on this 2007 Ford F-250 motor. We're going to be replacing the high pressure oil pump. Now to do that, you'll notice we already have the frame off the vehicle. We have quite a few components out of the way already. The transmission has been removed, the intake has been removed, the turbo has been removed, and pretty much every other component around the pump has been removed so that we can access the pump, the top cover, and get everything out of the way so we can get that pump out to replace it with the new pump. So that is going to be a little bit of work on your end first. Um, just know that there is quite a bit involved just to get to the pump. We're just at the pump level with the frame off so you can see that part of the process. But just make sure you know you're going to have quite a few hours invested in getting everything away from the pump before you can get it done. And if you'll notice, before we pull this plate, the first thing we really want to do is get all of this stuff this debris, this trash, this dirt away from the pump area because once we pull that plate we don't want any of that debris getting in to where the pump is. That's going to kind of void uh, any work that we do if it gets that debris in there. So we'll get that cleaned up, get this plate off and we'll move on from there. Now that we have the area cleaned up just a little bit you can see we've already kind of broken some of our bolts free here. We got just most of that stuff cleaned up out of the way that way we don't get any of that debris dropping down. So with that out of the way, we can pull our bolts out, and then we're going to be able to get our plate taken off. And you'll see right at the lip here of the plate, I just used a plastic wedge just to kind of break that free. Um, you don't really need anything too hard, just a little plastic wedge. And then you can pull the bolts out. And after you've used that wedge, it makes it very easy for the plate to just pop right up. And as you can see, this is one of the reasons we cleaned all that debris out of the way just to make sure none of it fell down immediately after we pulled the plate off. I wanted to clean some more of that up, but you notice none of that fell down as we pulled the plate up. So now that that's there, we're going to go ahead and take our bolts out. These are two 8mm bolts that are going to hold the branch tubes on, along with three T45 bolts holding the pump down. We'll get those three bolts and the two 8mm bolts on the branch tube pulled free, and then we'll also clean up this area a little bit more so that we can get the old pump out. And now with our two 8mm bolts, we can easily break these free with an impact, uh, even a battery operated impact, and an extension in our 8mm socket. And once we get those out of the way, we can then take our T45 socket, it's going to be the male end socket, with a ratchet and extension, and we'll get those three bolts holding the pump in out next. And so now that we've got our bolts free, did a little bit of a, a wipe job around just to make sure nothing falls down. We can just pull our pump straight up and now we have the old pump out of the way. And now that we've cleaned up a little bit more around the gasket area and we've got the pump out, we're just going to go ahead and drop a rag down here to keep any more debris from coming in. And we're going to take a look at that new pump that's going to be going in next. And now that we have our old pump out, we can look at the new pump here and as you can see we've got the full kit. We have the new pump as well as a new gasket kit. And you want to make sure you use the entire gasket kit. Remember, this is a high pressure oil pump system, so we don't want to have any leaks or any leak back whatsoever. So make sure you use the entire kit, uh, all the bolts, all the seals, all the O-rings. And then also in the kit, you're going to have a new IPR screen. So if you're not replacing the IPR, at least replace that IPR screen that comes included with the kit. Uh, again, one thing is most important is keeping that pressure high. Now, before we put the new pump in, Two of the most important things we need to make mention of here is replace the O-rings at the branch tube and the connection to the pump. Believe it or not, this is the two most common reasons these pumps fail after being replaced because it's either double O-ringed or the O-rings are forgotten. If there's a double O-ring where you forgot to pull the old one out or you forgot to put the O-ring in, you're going to have major pressure issues. So before anything else, make sure you replace those O-rings, get those new O-rings from your gasket kit installed. And that's the first thing to keep in mind so you know that when you get it all wrapped up and tightened back down, you know those were done and that's not going to be the cause of a pressure related issue. So now we have taken the plugs out of the bottom of the pump that keep it from having debris get in during shipping. We take those out, we'll go ahead and get the pump dropped in. When we'll, we want to line that up, make sure it sits on those O-rings just right. Make sure that gear sits on its gear just right. And then the next step is going to be those two 8 millimeter bolts at the branch tube and then our three T45 bolts we're going to go ahead and get those lined up and threaded in just a little bit 
uh, before we get to tightening them up because again we want to make sure we get those in and thread it down a little bit to keep our pump lined up before we start tightening anything down and you can see here the pump is nice and tight that means we should have a good line alignment there we shouldn't have any issues getting these bolts threaded pretty easily if we have this aligned properly now before we replace the cover here we're gonna make sure we clean up the surface around the gasket itself as you can see as I'm pulling it off there's some RTV silicone that's there from a prior installation that's not a problem we just want to make sure we get all of that cleaned off and make sure it's out of the way just like we clean the mounting surface around the pump because when we put that new gasket in we want it to be good and clean around the plate itself and then right at the corners where the plate sits down you're going to want to put a little RTV silicone here there's some notches there that need to be covered with some silicone before you put the plate back on that's going to ensure that there's no leaks and you don't have any pressure related issues being built up with the new pump and you can see I'm cleaning that now to be prepped for that RTV silicone that'll go on after the pump and now with our silicone in place and our plate reinstalled with the new gasket we can get it lined up you might have to press down a little bit just to get it to pop on and then we can go back with all of our eight millimeter bolts get those threaded in and we want to just thread those in to begin with we don't want to tighten them all down just yet because we're going to want to torque those down just like we had to torque down the eight millimeter bolts on the branch tubes and on the t45 bolts and all of those torque settings will be listed below for you so again we'll get our plate dropped in place we'll get our eight millimeter bolts on and then we'll get those torqued down and we'll go from there now that we have everything tightened back up, we have our bolts torqued down to the right specification, all of our gaskets and O-rings are in, we have our sealant on, this pump job is complete. So what we're going to have to do next is replace our IPR valve or put our old IPR valve back in. We're going to go ahead and put everything back together we took apart, which again is going to include the transmission, it's going to be the intake, it's going to be the turbo, and then also get the frame back on or the body back on. Then what we're going to have to do is make sure we put new, fresh, clean oil so that this pump gets the best quality oil from day one. That way it has a long life going after this installation. So with that said, hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it takes to remove and replace the high-pressure oil pump on this 6-liter F250 Ford Power Stroke.